Okay, Shh. so we should uh, resume. We don't have that much time. I mean, it's nice to answer questions, but uh, yeah, we also should progress with uh, what we are supposed to learn. Okay, so we were talking about uh, the fetch API. That means that that's a function inside the browser environment that allows us to load uh, URLs any URL that you like, okay? You just specify it as a string, and then you use the response, which comes in the form of the value of a fulfilled promise, okay? And we say that the promise is rejected only in case of network error, so uh, the, the fetch cannot connect, okay? So I basically cannot load anything. Okay, but if something is loaded, regardless of the answer of the server, it's a fulfilled promise. And uh, how we handle the response from the fetch? Well, actually, the response uh, is an object which has a, a number of properties and methods. Uh, as I was saying before, the proper most important property is probably dot OK that allows you to distinguish. Uh, if the uh, status code is in the uh, range 200, uh, 299, which means everything was okay, or if there was uh, some problem, okay? The status is actually the, the value of the status uh, code of the HTTP. So you can also know which was the value, 404, 500, and so on, okay? And then you have uh, quite, a, quite a number of uh, um, properties, uh, but also methods, okay? Here you see examples, I mean, you can look at this example, there are just console logs uh, done on a, on a fetch, you can experiment by yourself. But what is interesting for us is that uh, uh, we, uh, we need to understand how to use the response, okay? And since we decided, it's our decision, it, in our web application, we always talk with, uh, by using the JSON format for the data, both for the, uh, uh, the questions and the answers, we will always use this method, dot JSON, that takes the body of the response, convert, uh, interpret it as a JSON, and create a corresponding object in JavaScript for us. Okay, so in short, the return value of response JSON is a JavaScript object that represents the response from the web server. And of course, to make this work, it means that every response from the web server should come in JSON format. And that's why we developed our API web server that always answers in JSON format. Either the body is not existent, so I mean, if there's no body, no problem. We are not reading the body, and that's no problem. But we know there is no body for a certain API, so we will not call response JSON for that API. Okay? We just check maybe the, uh, the status code or the OK flag and so on. Okay? Um, so one more thing. How to use the fetch in a more complete... Uh, no, what is it? Okay. More complete fashion. So there's an optional parameter to the fetch in addition to the string that represents the uh, URL. That is an object where you can specify different properties, in particular these three properties, method, headers, and body. Okay? This is very useful if you don't want to do a get uh, uh, request. Okay? The default is get, like with the browser. If you don't specify anything, there will uh, th there will be a, an HTTP GET transaction, okay? So a GET of the URL will be performed. If you would like to do a POST, a PUT, DELETE, and so on, you need to specify it with the, ad with the additional parameter. Like in this example, we would like to, you know, POST to this URL, which is a string. Uh, so we open the uh, curly bracket. So we create an object on the fly in JavaScript, and we say that uh, method is post, string post. Here we can write uh, get, post, put, delete. We can put headers, which is again another object with a list of uh, 
names of headers and values, and this is mandatory if we would like to send uh, uh, JSON content to the server, so that the JSON um, uh, part on the server, so the JSON middleware on the server will interpret it as JSON, okay? And then there is, will be the body, that is actually the HTTP body. How we transform the body in JSON? Well, very simple. This, there is a predefined fa function in any JavaScript environment, uh, in particular in the browser, json.stringify, and you pass an object, and this will be converted into JSON. So actually, we don't really need to, have, uh, need to do s many things. I mean, specify the method, this header exactly in this form, and the body converted into JSON by this function that does everything for us, okay? And then we get a promise. So we will have a, a dot then, not shown here, that tend us the answer, fine. And if we need to handle the error, uh, we need a catch, okay? Either try catch or dot catch uh, with a function. And remember, this function will be called only when there will be a network connection problem, okay? Not for errors on the web server side, okay? If there's an internal error on the web server, it returns 500, fine. We will go into the then because it's a fulfilled promise, okay? We need to check the status in the code, okay? Um, so, let's see an example. Uh, um, eh, like this one, okay? You see, fetch URL. So this is very simple. This is a get because there's no object specified here. So the default is get. And then response, that's an object, the object that we saw before. So if not response, okay, there will be a problem. I mean, we will handle it in some ways in our application. Here we just throw an error, but uh, I mean, we can set something in the application, show some strings, show whatever you want in your application. We'll decide later what to do with the errors. And then if the type is, applica is not application JSON, okay, it's another error, but actually if it's our server, if uh, uh, we did uh, everything correctly, the type will be application JSON, and so we can call uh, uh, response JSON, which will be put here, okay? There will be another example showing this, okay? In case there is a network error, that's the catch, okay? And again, we need to decide what to do. Typically, I mean, uh, you, you don't really have to do anything when there is a network error. You, you need to show something in the application like uh, try again later or stuff like this, okay? If you lose the network connection, there's nothing you can really do. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the different uh, request, okay? Fetch with a string. Again, this is a get a, a, as well because there's no object specifying post, etc. So you get a response. Uh, that's an async function, so the fetch returns a promise, so in short, it's an async function. So we can wait for the response with the await, as you learned uh, when we discussed about asynchronous programming. Response, everything is fine, let's assume everything is fine, here the, nobody checked it, okay? But let's assume that there is a body. Uh, you can do response JSON, what I should tell you about this uh, function is that uh, the JSON method returns a promise uh, as well, okay? So also the JSON function returns a promise, so you can await it, okay? And you should await it, okay? To avoid blocking. And users, uh, that's, a, that's the variable in which we put the object that is the result of the parsing of the JSON, okay? And this can be, this can be an array, an object, a number, whatever, whatever it is, depends on what we decided to do on the server side in the API. If we return a number, it's a number. If we return an array, it's an array, and so on, okay? Probably here it's an array because we say users zero, so pick the first one. And then again, call again fetch, that's fine, and so on. 
So in short, whenever we need to load something from the server, or from a server in general in the network, we just use fetch, call it from the JavaScript, take the result, and process the result. That's all, okay? What we do with the result? Well, it depends on your application. In, in your lab, you will be asked on, on uh, Tuesday, uh, you will be asked to load the list of films. Okay, very simple stuff. Just one fetch, load the list of films. Probably an array will come out from the server, and you use this array to populate the list of films in your interface. Okay, and we will do actually do the same here. In the example, we will populate a list of answers just to try the fetch, okay? And experiment with some J, uh, cross scripting as well, okay? Since the fetch returns a promise, you can even run fetches in parallel, okay? As you run promises in parallel, exactly the same way, promise all, that was the method to run promises in parallel, okay? So fine, uh, I mean, that's up to you, Programming in this way is a bit more complex because you need to, you know, create an array of promises, call promise all, handle the result, you know, of each promise and so on. Otherwise, you can load stuff sequentially. Still fine. In the previous case, you don't have any other option because the second fetch depends on the first one. But if fetches are independent, you can also fetch stuff in parallel. That's fine, okay? That's even better, okay? Because uh, maybe you have enough bandwidth and you can, uh, you know, load things faster. That's why you would like to do uh, things in parallel. Okay, uh, last thing I should uh, point out about fetch. Well, actually fetch is a quite uh, primitive way of loading uh, uh, URLs in the browser. It's nowadays it's available in any browser uh, and in any case with the framework that we are going to use, so the, the React, we don't need uh, to care about this, okay? If it's not there, there will be a polyfill, so a library that implements it, no problem. But uh, for instance, uh, there are things uh, that are not easy to do with a fetch, like, uh, you know, setting a timeout, so you ask for a resource and the server doesn't answer or there's a network connection problem, and so on. How can I say to the fetch, uh, well, after five seconds, just tell me you, you, you were not able to you know, load the resource, and no way to do it with the fetch. Oh, well, at least, actually, yeah, th there's a way, but it's very complex, <laughs> okay? So, if you really need to handle these special cases, Maybe you should uh, think to use uh, alternative libraries that basically they use fetch inside, but they provide you a nicer interface in terms of programming for handling these cases, okay? Like timeout uh, and, uh, you know, conversions and, and stuff th like that, okay? Uh, so if you really want to use something, al an alternative, uh, uh, we suggest using Axios, which is again a package that you can uh, download and import in your projects, okay? Uh, like, uh, you know, you would like to have a progress bar, but it's really a nightmare with the fetch, okay? But if the library provides this functionality, it's easier, right? We are not requiring to have a progress bar in your final project, okay? So for us, the fetch is more than enough. But sometimes, you know, we would like to give you advice on how to, you know, think, do things in a more, uh, let's say, realistic way, like for a realistic project in which uh, you would like to have also fancy things to show in your application, okay? So fine, this is more or less all on fetch. And, um, um, uh, we will see the last topic for today and then we'll go to, mm, you know, program a little bit. So mimicking what we are, you are going to do in, in next lab on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, yes, the question. So, 
So the question is about when we uh, need to do escaping and sanitizing in our call. So we go back uh, to the previous set of slides. Okay. So that's basically this uh, this point. Okay. So you need to decide what is needed by your client application. If your client application need to show show in the window exactly what is written in your content, that's escaping, no alternative, okay? Like in a blog post, you would like to write something, you would like that what you write is what is shown, okay? I am explaining to you how the script works. I would like the script to show up in the window. Otherwise, you cannot read it, okay? Sanitization instead is what you need when you need the browser interpret uh, that the browser interprets the uh, the code that you have written. Okay, so if you would like to allow text HTML text in your content and these tags should have an effect on the visualization, like bold, italics, images, and so on you need to perform sanitization. You cannot just show the content as it is because it's risky, okay? But in this case, you are aware of the risk, and so basically you will not allow anybody to write script or images with errors and stuff like that because otherwise you are subject to uh, cross-site scripting, okay? So either you decide that you show everything, but you don't execute the code, or if you'd like to execute the code, you need to limit what is shown, okay? So that's what allows you to decide if you should use escaping or sanitization. So in short, it's the context on the client in which the content is used, okay? If the content is used to be for, for being interpreted, you need to sanitize. If it's just to show, uh, you should just escape and that's enough. Okay? I hope it's clear enough. Okay? Okay, so let's come to the last point. Actually, it's a very technical point in the sense that uh, there are not, not so many concepts uh, to understand but it's something that we already used in, uh, you know, in some implicit form, but here we will discuss it uh, a bit better and say everything which needs to be said in this context. So what are JavaScript modules? So the modules are a way in which we can split our JavaScript program into mul multiple files, okay? You know that in the beginning of this course, I said one, pro one file, one JavaScript file, one program, one JavaScript program. That's still true. But with the mechanism of modules, we can split the code into multiple files and make these multiple files behave like a single JavaScript program. Okay? And now we'll see how this can be done. Okay? So the point is uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, okay, you can use a do-it-yourself approach, uh, but uh, we will forget about this because actually when you use uh, uh, you know, code written by others, you are basically forced to use either modules or uh, in the form of ES ES6 modules or in the format uh, required by Node.js. Okay, so in short, there are two ways of handling modules. So JavaScript code to be imported in your program, in your JavaScript program. One is modules in the form of ES6 modules. ES6 is the JavaScript version. Since ES6, uh, there is this possibility, okay? And ES6 is quite old, I, I, remember, I remind you. And uh, there is the Node.js way, which is actually the way that we used until now, the require function that is available in Node.js, okay? We'll just say a few words about this because this is useful both for importing modules in the browser in Node.js and also to create files written by us that can be 
uh, imported as modules, okay? So to split our program into different files. Um, so in short, a module in JavaScript is a file that exports one or more values, typically objects, because objects are very flexible, can contain values or functions, okay? Typically, we would like to import objects on which we call functions. Think about the JS. That's what you do, right? You, you import an object, and on this object, you can call methods, and they perform the operation that you would like to do. OK, uh, how can we import uh, these uh, modules? Well, we saw the Node.js uh, stuff, and that's fine, and we already tried to do that. Uh, this is not the Node.js file which uh, we leave for the end because it's very simple and you already know it. Require and that's all, okay? Uh, but uh, if you would like to import JavaScript module, for instance, in the browser or as we will do in React from next week, we need to use the import keyword in JavaScript, which comes, uh, which is available from uh, ES6. Okay, from the JavaScript version ES6. Uh, import and export must be at the top level, cannot be nested into functions and so on. And there are two different types of exports. So named export and default exports. Let's see examples because it's much easier. Okay. So let's say this is a file uh, which define a function to be exported. How we export a function? Well, very simple export default, and that's what we would like to export. Could be directly the function definition or typically an object that will contain function and stuff, okay? You can export anything. You can export objects, strings, etc. but as I told you, typically you export objects because they are, the, so you can write dot something and you have access to other values or other methods in the same export, okay? So you don't import too many things uh, just for have, uh, to have a, f a functionality like uh, DJS and so on. So you import the DJS object uh, and there you have all the functions that you need. Okay? Uh, here uh, the focus is on what you export. So uh, what uh, the DJS developer should write, okay? Or what we should write if we develop a model. So we write a file with a set of functions and we make them available to another part of our program. So the export default just export one value, any kind of value, okay? So typically object, but not only. We can export more than one value with this syntax, dropping default, and just exporting the value or an object with all the values. And the export exports also the name that we gave uh, to the value, okay? So let's say uh, here we export strings uh, just because it's simpler to read, okay? But we, again, we typically export functions, okay? Or object containing functions. So export name and another name. And on the other side, we will be able to import those values using name and another name, like we do import uh, the JS, okay, and they export it with a certain name, okay? Um, okay, we can also do import from, uh, and uh, uh, the, f uh, the from, uh, so, sorry, the, the previous was the export. To do the import, we need to use this syntax. So import a certain name, that we decide ourselves here from, and we need to say which is the file or the package that contains the export that we would like to import, okay? So in short, like uh, import DJS from uh, uh, quotation day, DJS, okay? Imports are hoisted and read-only, so in, uh, it's like uh, uh, they are written in the, at the top of the file, but we typically write them at the top of the file, not to be confused, okay? So that's uh, what, what hoisted means. And read only in the sense that we cannot modify those objects, okay? They are just objects to be used uh, to access uh, values or functions, okay? So in short, in one file, we do the export, 
and in the other file we do the import okay so export and here we export uh, with the default keyword a function and on the right part we import with a certain name the default export that we did in the other file okay module one js that's the name of the file okay be careful you need to include the path including the current directory which is dot slash okay if it's your file if it's a package we, we will not need uh, to use this syntax okay uh, or you need the absolute URL, but this is not recommended because if you move the folder then everything breaks down okay uh, so very simple stuff I mean you just need to get used a little bit from one side you do export uh, from the other side you do import and when you do the import you decide the name that's all so name the import that means that you export uh, stuff with certain names and when you do the import you decide what to import and which name is used for the import okay typically you keep the same name not to get confused but sometimes uh, maybe your name is already used and you, you need to change it. So that's the syntax as keyword to change uh, the name. Okay? That's very, should be quite simple. Okay? You can import everything. You can import just a, a, a subset of stuff, which is typically what we will do. Like React, that's a very, very big library, a very, very big package. We only import what we need in our program. Like, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the functions, uh, the basic function to create uh, elements and stuff, okay? Um, in, other t uh, in other cases, uh, we just need to import everything, like the JS, the just one object, we import the object and that's all, okay? So we don't need to choose, uh, you know, what to import because there's just one thing that has been exported, okay? Uh, the instruction of the package will tell you how to import stuff, okay? Will tell you if they wrote like export default or export with certain names and so on, okay? If you do it yourself, you know, because you just need to check in your code. Okay, we need, we can import modules in the browser. That's the important thing that today we will use. So we can do the import of modules also in the browser using of course text script because that's code that's javascript code but just remember this stuff which is bold type module okay uh, we need to tell the browser that actually we are importing a module so inside this code we can use the import keyword to import other stuff or export to export stuff okay otherwise the the file will be loaded as a standalone program Okay, as we did until now. So, uh, modules are automatically loaded in the fair mode. Remember the defer that we saw last time when we talked about script? Load at the end, uh, uh, I mean, load during uh, the, the parsing, but execute at the end. Modules are always imported like this. Okay, so loaded as soon as possible, but executed at the end. That's fine. Uh, okay, ES6 modules are also supported in Node.js, but uh, I would not recommend to use it, okay? It's true that they work, but uh, the package needs to be configured to use both uh, ES6 modules and CommonJS modules, that is the format of Node.js, the default format of Node.js, and not all the packages have this support, okay? So I invite you to use the traditional way of handling modules in Node.js as we did until now with the require. But when you are in the browser, you will use ES6 modules, okay? Because, because in the browser, there's no other option. The only option is this one, which works only for ES6 modules. That's all, okay? So in short, we will only use modules that have an ES6 uh, package okay that is available but, but i mean for for our libraries and packages uh, mm, basically everything is available in both ways so it's not really a problem for us uh, just uh, one more thing about how 
Node.js modules work? Well, actually, Node.js modules are very simple. Uh, uh, we can also say primitive, maybe. Okay? They were developed uh, much earlier than the ES6 modules because uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the Node.js uh, um, environment needed a lot of the packages uh, you know, to be imported to develop uh, interesting functionalities, in short, because we are not in a browser, so we need to write code, and basically we need to import libraries uh, and functions. Okay? Um, and so how do modules work in, uh, in Node.js, so with a common JS format? Well, actually, uh, when you write a file for uh, being a module in Node.js, it's like that uh, around the file you put this function, okay? So in short, this function is uh, defined as a function that provides you a, a few parameters like exports, require, and so on, okay? So require, you recognize the require, where it comes from, okay? That's a function. Uh, that is provided to you by the node environment when it loads your program that you can call because it, it's this parameter, okay, of the function that surrounds your code. But there is also the exports uh, parameter that you already saw uh, and I in, in the labs. Uh, I provided you an e examples because I didn't want to explain all this stuff uh, too early because uh, we needed to know how things work in the browser before explaining you know, all this stuff about modules. But you see that at a certain point, we simply used exports dot something, and you were able to do require of this stuff in the other file. Like this is the DAO file, and in another file, you can do DAO dot list films because you do require of this file in the other one. Okay, so in short, uh, there's nothing really new apart from the ES6 modules uh, that we are going to see in a minute. From, for the uh, Node.js modules, what you have done until now is perfectly fine, and I invite you to keep doing this, uh, um, using this way to handle modules uh, in Node.js. Okay, so there is this variable exports. Everything that you define in export gets automatically exported and uh, it can be imported with a simple require in the other file, okay? Uh, just be careful, as you probably already noticed, uh, if you specify a module name, so something that you install with the npm install, you don't need to specify a path, okay? So no dot slash. If you want to import uh, your file, you need to specify the path, dot, slash, etc. okay? So that's the way by which the require function understand that it should search in the package directory or in the current directory for your files, okay? That's the only difference uh, that you probably didn't know yet, okay? So that's all we need to know about modules. Okay, now we just try to apply all this knowledge. It's quite a big body of knowledge, I guess, that today we, we got, especially about the cross scripting, okay? That was a big uh, topic for today. So now, if there are no questions, we'll go and try to program a little bit. So apply what we have seen in the slides to our example. First, in the example, that uh, we carry on during the lectures, so the question and answer example, and then you will try to reuse what we are going to do now in the lab on Tuesday by yourself, okay? So hopefully you learn it uh, by doing it yourself. Okay, so let's go to the uh, programming environment. So this is the uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, let me see what's the correct, correct directory. Yes, that's the week 06. So there is already something available as usual in the lecture examples. From now on, basically every week there will be something new already available. So 
These are the, the files that we already developed uh, for the web server, okay? But I also created uh, a, a directory named public in which I put the client stuff, okay? So the index that we developed uh, last time, actually you developed it uh, with my colleague, I think, okay? So the table with the list of answers and stuff. And uh, the app.js, so actually the JavaScript code uh, that uh, we developed uh, together to create uh, the elements uh, or the answers starting from the array, okay? And now we'll transform this uh, example a little bit to ma make it uh, a full web application. Okay, the, our fu first full web application. So where we have both the client and the server running and the, the application is served actually by the server, the web server, okay? So, uh, first, so here we have the exact same file. The other directory is for me to copy stuff and not to lose too much time while explaining, okay? So uh, in short, it's a um, sort of solution, okay? So, first of all, we need to, um, you know, uh, have this, make this uh, application work. So, we have the index inside the public, okay? And we would like to serve this index uh, HTML page with the web server. The web server is already working uh, in the sense that uh, here, if we do uh, npm, uh, uh, no, nod, nod mon, not more on uh, index.js, it's already working. That, that's the API server, okay? And we can check if it's working uh, as we usually did, uh, okay? Send a question, send a request to the API and you see the answer, that's fine, okay? The, ser the server is the API server that we've developed so far, no, no difference, okay? But how can we load this index.js from the web server? Well, this is the first uh, problem, but it will be easily solved, okay? Actually, you already solved it. In the sense that, uh, you see, there's a middleware that I mentioned when I was discussing Express. I told you, you can say that what is put into a certain directory, this public, should be served under the, the, the URL static uh, from the web server, okay? So let's try from a browser. So localhost 3001 slash, uh, we say the static index HTML, okay? We have served the index HTML from the web server, okay? Uh, and the application uh, uh, has been loaded from the web server. Actually, we are not using the rest, so we are not using the uh, APIs of the server at the moment, but we just loaded a static file which internally loaded uh, other resources. So it loaded uh, the uh, CSS, uh, well, the Bootstrap CSS, of course, but also our CSS somewhere. Well, maybe here, here it's not shown. Uh, let's have a look at the network request. Let's reload them. So that's easier. You see that. Uh, Index.js was loaded with a get. That's a default that happens when you type a URL in the browser, right? And then the HTML was parsed by the browser. It, it, uh, the browser understood that there was a CSS to load and it loaded this style CSS from our web server, okay? And also the rest was loaded, okay? Uh, just it was loaded from the network and not from our web server, okay? As we did, uh, as we already did la last time. I mean, last time we directly loaded an HTML file. This time we are loading it uh, from a web server, okay? But that for our convenience, it's on our computer, but, at the, um, but it could be anywhere in the network, okay? I'm not using a server anywhere in the network because if the network breaks down, we are stick here without the possibility to do anything. 
And also because every time I do a modification in the files, I should do it in the network server. Uh, 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 it's more, less convenient, okay? But the principle is that one. Okay, fine. So, first of all, um, let's transform uh, the, um, uh, our client. So, our um, uh, web application in a way that can use modules, okay? So we start to apply the modules concept. So we try, we reorganize the content using modules. First of all, the app should be loaded as a module. So this defer is not, is not fine anymore, okay? So we should, uh, no, no, not this one, but this one, okay? Type uh, module, okay? Save. Um, yes, okay, we need to stop it, restart it, and uh, reload, okay. Nothing changes, right? Because actually the program is exactly the same. It's nothing really changed. What is changed now is that in, in our application, so in app, I can write the stuff like this, import, Okay, uh, yes, uh, I can import the DJS for instance. Okay, or I can import anything from my files as well. Okay, so uh, let's try to move uh, some of our content uh, in, uh, uh, no, maybe it's better not to move our content. No, because otherwise we, we but let's, let's try, let's try. Let's uh, create a new file, okay, uh, data.js, okay, and we put uh, our answers here inside, okay, uh, data, use strict, don't forget the use strict, okay, even though with models should happen automatically anyway. Uh, so we define answers, export, uh, 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 actually, I don't like that much the default exports uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes, I mean, if you give a name, it's easier. Okay, so always open the brackets and, and give a name. Okay. So if you open the brackets, the name will be exported as well. Okay, the default export doesn't export the name. Uh, and here, let's say import, uh, uh, what was the name? Answers. Answers. Okay, you see <laughs> Visual Studio is very proactive, okay? That's not the copilot, but it's just a Visual Studio basic version. Okay, so in short, uh, it recognized that there was a file, uh, I, 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 I did a, a, an export in that file, so there are this uh, export uh, floating around and uh, it says that uh, it has the same name and it suggests this, uh, this import, which is fine, okay? So I saved. The file, reload the stuff. Okay, there's something broken. So what's broken? Uh, it's always nice to have something broken because when, when you are alone in the lab, well, in the lab you're not alone, but when you develop the project and you will, be, you will be alone and you need to, you know, debug your application, right? Okay? Let's have a look at the console. When we don't know what to do, first thing, have a look at the browser console. Okay, loading module from it was blocked because there's allowed MIME types, etc. Actually, I didn't want to load data. I, did, I wanted to load data.js. Okay? So be careful of the suggestions. Okay, file save. Let's retry. Okay, so this time there's something, okay? When you don't know what to do, have a look at the console. There should be no errors, no unexplained errors, okay? If you are in the lab, just call us. If you're not in the lab, try to write on the chat, on the, on the Telegram, okay? If, I, if I'm online, I'll try to look at the problem. Otherwise, maybe some of, some of your colleagues have a look and have a suggestion. May, you know, you all will be encountering similar problems uh, while, while, you know, developing for this course, okay? 
uh, developing code, I mean. Um, okay, fine. So be careful that they suggest it. But here, we have an import, we have a module, very simple module. Actually, we don't, expo we don't export a function, we just export a value, but it's still fine, okay? We just wanted to try something, okay? And now, okay, uh, let's try to load something from the server. We have an API, we can run an API to load the answers, right? So let's try if this API works. Uh, question uh, one answers. Let's try if this works. These are the answers that I would like to put in my source code. Uh, actually, not the source code, actually the web interface. So uh, be processed by the JavaScript and create the corresponding elements and show them to the user, okay? So they are not, it's not static content, it's something that should be generated dynamically. But actually we already did it last time because app uh, create uh, a node and then a list of nodes and so on. It appends stuff in the DOM tree and it creates the answers, right? So uh, let's try to write a fetch function. That is the function that we said is needed to load information from a server, okay? Let's try to put it into another file so we practice with the modules. But that's also a good uh, programming habit, uh, okay? We will keep it uh, for React as well. Let's have a, a file with all the APIs. I mean, the client code handling the APIs that we will use on the server. So in short, here inside, we will put all the fetch, fetch calls and so on, okay? Use strict. Fine, so uh, let me see if I can do something similar to what I put online late, okay? So, um, let's define a function, get uh, all answers, okay? That's a, a name that I decided, okay? It's a function, uh, it's an async function because I will not block the client interface by calling this function. I don't want to block the, the client interface calling this function. And in any case, I will probably return a promise that is the stuff that is returned by the fetch. So in any case, this will become a, an async function, okay? Uh, anyway, we can go back to this later. So what are we going to write in this, uh, in this function? Well, uh, well, let's start with something simple. Fetch the URL, okay? So let's say we, we should write uh, HTTP, no, HTTP, localhost. Uh, wh what we have tried here in API HTTP, okay? So API, uh, what was uh, the questions? Uh, questions, uh, one answers. One is the ID of the question, okay? I just have one question, okay? So this should already work, but of course I'm not taking the result. So let's take the result. Um, you can decide if you would like to have a promise and so do dot then uh, with the, uh, so if you would like to write dot then and so on, or if you would like to use the await async uh, um, style of programming, okay? Uh, you can do whatever you want. Personally, I prefer if you use the await async because it, the code is easier to read. That's just, you know, a personal preference, okay? So when we do stuff like this, either we do return fetch, but we don't process the result and we, do, we require that uh, we're calling to get all answers, expect a promise, which I don't like, okay? Uh, I would like to process the promise, extract the body, process the information, which is in the JSON format, create a, a JavaScript 
array in this case because it's a list of answers and give back the list of answers, okay? So that's what I'm going to write here in the code, okay? So first of all, we need to, uh, well, await, uh, await for the result of the fetch and here we get a response, right? Const response. That is the object that we have seen in the slides. Uh, we don't need the second parameter because this is a get uh, request, uh, so no additional parameters are needed. Okay, if we are doing a post, uh, it's more complex and we will need it. But we will leave it for later when we have React and stuff. Response. Uh, actually, response should be a, uh, an object that contains the body of the response, which is supposed to be in JSON format. In any case, so even if the list is empty, it will be an empty array, but still in JSON format, okay? So we can parse it. Remember that the response is a promise, okay? So also JSON, met also the JSON method returns a promise. So we need to await for it, okay? A and uh, uh, what we get here, we get the object. Actually, not the object because we say it's an array, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So here we get the answers, okay? No, sorry, the, uh, oh yeah, I wrote questions. I should, I should change my code before I commit it uh, later because I brought questions, but actually these are the answers, okay? Um, okay. Um, and then uh, we need to decide how to treat this, uh, these answers, okay? Uh, in the code, in the app code, I defined uh, a function answer to create an answer object, okay? Should I use it or not? Well, that's up to you, okay? Uh, it depends if you would like to use some, uh, a programming style that is more object-oriented, so you like these uh, constructor functions or not. If you like constructor functions, you need to call answer for each element in the array and construct the answer object. Otherwise, you keep uh, the object as it is returned by the server, as we saw it here, okay? Uh, you know, this is already an object. This is JSON format, but this is more or less the same format as in JavaScript, right? So there are uh, properties, ID, text, respondent, etc. What's the advantage of using the constructor function or in general processing the result coming from the server and creating a new object? that in the middle you can do some conversion or adaptation if you like. For instance, no, for instance here we don't do anything. <laughs> nothing. Okay, nothing. Uh, but in case, uh, let's say, you would like to convert the, the AJS, uh, I mean the, the date string into a DJS object, that's a place where you can put it, okay? So let's try to do it. Uh, where is API, okay? So, uh, Let's say we can do uh, return answers map. Well, return is a bit, uh, it's an anticipation. Answers map, that's an array, map e, uh, e uh, element, okay? Uh, uh, we can create a new uh, answer, answer, okay? And pass all the parameters in terms of E, I, D, et cetera. Uh, no. And this is an array of answer objects, but this is uppercase, okay? What's the problem here? It's, you see, the answer is not defined here. So again, if you would like to use this approach, maybe it's better to take your uh, object definition and put it into a module. So let's practice with the modules once more, last time, okay? So new file, QA uh, models, 
okay? It's like the, the data model for, for your code. Use uh, uh, strict, uh, and let's take the function uh, uh, here, answer, cut and paste, okay? No, okay, here, export, uh, export uh, answer, okay. Okay, now I can import it uh, in API, right? Import answer, let's see, no, it's still wrong, okay? Models.js, okay? Uh, answers, answer, sorry, answer. Uh, just be careful with the names because they are very difficult to debug. <laughs> uh, and also here, we can import the same. So import answer, answer from QModels.js. Now it learned that it's .js, okay? So here you also see, you can import the same stuff in different places in your program, okay? That's, that's fine, okay? It's a read-only view, as we said, okay? So they don't interfere. And typically you import functions, so that's not a big deal. I mean, importing data is just for play, because now, uh, now we will uh, comment them because we will load them from the server, okay? So importing data is typically not done. Importing values, I mean, uh, simple values. APIs, so we need to, you know, finish, uh, uh, you know, uh, Writing all the parameters for this function, e text, e uh, respondent, e uh, score, e date, e uh, question ID. How do I know these names? If I don't remember, I just check. Let's do a query. These are the names. ID, text, respondent, score, date, question ID. What I, what I was s seeing before here in the API, this E, that's the answers that are the parsing of the JSON coming from the server. So the names of the properties are just the ones specified in the JSON coming from the server. These names, okay? But here in the middle, I can do whatever I like. So I would like to convert it into DJS and so on. I can do it here. That's very convenient, okay? And so uh, what do we do here with this uh, answers map? Answers map in a new array with new objects? Well, actually, simply return them, okay? Okay, fine. Uh, okay, remember I, I wrote async here, and I, I invite you to, to you always use async in these API functions. So you transform a function which is potentially blocking, even though here the blocking is very limited because it's just a conversion, into an async function, it means it returns a promise, okay? It's like a return new promise, etc. I just need to remember this when I use it I use the get all answers, okay? So let's go back here. Let's comment uh, the import of answers here because now I load them from the server, right? Uh, let's go where we used these uh, answers, okay? So in short, the answer list should now come from the server, right? List, uh, list. Okay, so let answer list. Okay, we'll comment the previous one. You cannot redefine the variable. Await get all, uh, all, all, nothing because we forget to import, uh, you know, import uh, the uh, the function, so get all answers, 
it's uh, no maybe i didn't export it yet right yeah export get all answers okay save always say before uh, moving to another file so it suggests something <laughs> Uh, uh, that was API, okay? Get all answers. Get all answers, okay? Uh, the URL was fixed. Yes, one. Okay, I can make it a parameter, but uh, let's try if it works, okay? Before I do further modifications. So I'm not really sure I didn't do any errors, but let's try. Okay, so let's reload. Okay, good. This time I was good, okay? Always check if something is happening in the console. Maybe there are errors that uh, wa were hidden because they didn't create a big problem, but always check the console, okay? When we test the program at the exam, very often we will have a look at the console, okay? Because you know, nothing should appear in the console except for, you know, uh, stuff that you cannot control, okay? Like uh, loading, uh, trying to load uh, like uh, the icon of the website and all this stuff, it gives an error, but because we didn't define them, that's fine, okay? Um, okay, so we already have a good uh, mm, uh, status of our solution in the sense that uh, we have a fetch. We are loading the data from the server. We use the modules. We just need to test a little bit of cross-site scripting. So I show you something uh, and what you should do uh, when, when you have cross-site script. Before going on, you know, uh, try to, one, one, once uh, you have uh, things uh, that are working in a reasonable way, uh, let's make uh, the code uh, as good as possible, okay? get all answers, I would like to pass an ID, the ID of the answer, right? So this URL could be parametric, right? So uh, ID, but we need to convert it into a template literal. Uh, what's the place of this tick? Yes. Also, uh, the first part of the URL is always the same, right? So cut const URL equal to, okay? So fetch URL plus, okay? Because, uh, you know, uh, when you have a real application, you will have many functions and you would like to have the same initial part of the URL. If you need to change the port, you don't need to change uh, 10 lines of code, okay? But that's very basic stuff, okay? Nothing really special. So let's still try if everything works, hope so. No, you see, answered map is not a function, undefined, okay. You see, I asked for questions, undefined answers, which of course it doesn't exist. Why it is undefined? Because the ID was not defined when it when the function was called, so here one, okay, okay. You see the error, this five icon error. We cannot do anything about this. That's the icon that should appear here, but if we don't define it, uh, it doesn't exist. But we don't care about this icon, okay? So, I mean. These are the answers, right? Everything should work. Uh, I can commit before we go on. So let's try to do the commit uh, and see. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, first modifications. So you get it uh, without waiting me to go back to the office and see, you know. The many emails are, uh, that are waiting for me, etc. Okay, um, you might have noticed uh, that I've inserted a new answer. You see, 
IMG, ACRC, et cetera, on R, the stuff that we saw on the slide about cross-site scripting, you know? So a malicious actor already came to my website and added an answer with this code, okay? Let's suppose this, uh, this has happened, okay? Actually, it was me modifying the database, okay? Uh, why? Just because otherwise I need to implement another fetch with the post, uh, I need to put the form to create a new answer and so on. It's very long stuff just to arrive at this point uh, that, that is more important than the rest, okay? And the form will be um, handled uh, directly in, in React, okay? We are not going to see how to handle forms uh, in basic JavaScript because uh, otherwise probably uh, 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 a repetition of things uh, which do, don't really help to understand. While, you know, playing a little bit with JavaScript directly inside the browser help us understand the usefulness of React, but doing too many things uh, for this course is not uh, so useful, okay? Anyway, let's say somebody has put this string inside my uh, database. And actually, you can see this database uh, and this content, uh, uh, QA, you see the answers, uh, and you see this, uh, this stuff, okay? That's in the database, okay? But luckily, luckily, okay, I was using uh, for the uh, creation of my elements in uh, JavaScript for the title, to the text, uh, I was creating a text node, okay? So creating a text node is safe. Creating an HTML node, so s putting the content as HTML to be parsed as HTML by the browser, it is not, okay? But let's assume that we did a, we were not so careful, or maybe better, that we would like to allow the user to use basic text like uh, the B and the I for doing uh, uh, bold and italics uh, fonts, okay? So if we would like to, this text to work, we have no other chance than allowing the parsing of the content uh, in, in HTML format by the browser, okay? So let's make this tax work. The modification is very simple. We go to up, and here we use, uh, for instance, uh, uh, that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, that's up, right? Yeah. Uh, inner HTML, okay? Okay, so let's say the, uh, that we do um, new TD. This was new td2, inner HTML equal to ans, ans text, okay? So I saved the file, don't forget to save the file. Let's see what happens, okay? What happened? The stuff that was here, now it's been parsed and executed by the browser. So it happened that uh, it was that image with an invalid URL, the on error code was called, and the on error code was you know, showing me this alert, which is this uh, window with the text I specified. This is very simple stuff. It could be fetch uh, HTTP, whatever place in the, in the network, uh, sending whatever data, okay? collecting the data from the br browser environment, etc. okay? My name, uh, first name, last name, address, etc. because I'm uh, filling up a form, uh, whatever, okay? So, I, I always, uh, we are always using simple code to do this uh, demonstration, of course, but could be anything, okay? But the rest is working. You see that this is bold and this is italics, right? So how do we solve this uh, situation? We need to decide. Either we uh, do not allow to use the text, but this is not really nice because uh, we would like to have the user 
that uh, users that can uh, add their formatting options, okay? Of course, we can say nothing is allowed, fine. But if your client, the one that pays for your application, wants to have the possibility to have formatting, what are you going to do? You need to find a way to allow the safe text, but not allowing the risky stuff, the text or attributes and whatever. So we need to sanitize the stuff that we are passing to the uh, client, okay? And I was saying before, the best place where you, you do this uh, operation is on the server, because typically the browser expects safe content from the server, okay? So we just need to import uh, the um, DOM purify and use it, okay? Uh, let me see if we have enough time to to use it, to do it. Uh, not sure, but uh, let's try. Um, well, first of all, yes, we need to go to the server. Okay. Uh, index. Yes. So, we decided we work on the server. So, let's forget about the client. Let's go back to the server. Index.js of the server, okay? Uh, first of all, stop the server and install what is required. npm install, a, we say DOM purify, you just need to follow the instruction, purify and JS DOM, right? DOM, okay? The two additional packages. <laughs> JavaScript is like this. We always uh, use a lot of packages. React will uh, use a lot more. And then, and then let me copy the stuff because we are always running out of time. Just copy the stuff that we are, you saw on the slides. So the initialization stuff. So this creates the DOM purify object that has the sanitize method. And we go and sanitize stuff. So I think uh, it was uh, in this place, uh, yes, new array in the uh, question answers, uh, list, an list answered by questions. So we need to go, well, uh, okay, Th that's, a <sighs> that's an issue. I mean, we need to def decide where we do sanitization, okay? Should we do it into the DAO? Should we do it here? Actually, the best thing should, uh, was uh, to do it before storing the data in the database. But since I don't have the post implemented and all this stuff, I cannot do it, okay? So the best place is when you get the data before storing it with the insert into the database, you do the sanitization. Since we didn't do this way, actually we are free to do whatever we, we want <laughs> in the sense that every time we return answers to client, we need to do the sanitization. Let's do it here, okay? Uh, so uh, else, okay? So we practice a little bit more with the JavaScript methods, okay? Const uh, results uh, purified, purified, okay? Uh, we do it uh, like result, map, e, and uh, we uh, return a new object, uh, object assign uh, with an empty object, uh, the copy of e, and we overwrite the property Okay, so the text is e text but purified. Okay, don't purify, uh, sanitize. Okay, I leave it here for a moment. Okay, so we just create a new object. We copy the old object and we overwrite the property text with the purified version of the text. Okay. And then, of course, we res return the results purified, purified, okay? Let's see if it works. 
Let's restart the server. Hopefully it works because I don't have so much time. Okay, no more alert. So the cross-site scripting don't happen. Of course, there's something broken in my website because uh, the hacker or the, the attacker was able to insert stuff in my database. I should have prevented the insert, okay? So this image will never show. But uh, at least I'm not subject to the cross-site scripting attack, okay? So I sanitized the content, and you see that here, the bold, the italics is continuous to work, okay? So this is the, uh, those have not been eliminated. Only the risky things have been eliminated by the DOM Purify Sanitize, okay? So this is more or less what you are going to try yourself in the lab for Tuesday. I will put the, the text online uh, just uh, in a few minutes when I'm back in the office. And the schedule for next week uh, is already there, okay? So you'll try the fetch and cross the scripting. And next week we will start on Monday talking about React, which is finally <laughs> you know, the place where we are heading to for the client application, okay? If you have questions, I'm glad to answer. Otherwise, uh, we'll meet Monday morning at 10, room uh, uh, R4, okay? Thank you.